Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I could do some fine art printing, but just really, really small? Well, we're going to figure out how on Imagination Labs. Welcome to the Open Press Project, a uh, DIY printmaking press. Pretty small. I think that's going to suit our needs. Now here I've downloaded the uh, files from the OpenPressProject.com um, and uh, arranged them. We're using Simplify 3D here. It's a slicer of choice. Please note that some of these pieces like this You'll have to duplicate because you'll need two of them. Same goes with uh, these little bow ties right here. You'll need two of those. Everything else is a single piece. Uh, minimal supports on it. Just make sure that uh, you do have some supports. So uh, let's get printing this thing. Now this was about an 18 hour print. Uh, the instructions do call for varying degrees of infill, anywhere from 25% to 50%, depending on the part. Uh, I just went ahead and did 50% for the entire thing, uh, just so I could print it all in one go on one plate. I'm just using standard PLA here. I put the print plate in the freezer because I used a lot of glue stick to avoid any warping in the parts since everything had to fit together really well. Uh, whenever you put something in the freezer as far as like a build plate like this, especially glass, the difference in uh, shrinkage between the glass and the plastic, once you uh, get it cold enough, will uh, usually loosen up and cause the parts to fall right off. I did use a lot of glue stick on the glass just to make sure that nothing warped. So uh, it was still pretty hard to get off of there, but we managed it. These two side support pieces have a print in place guided rail system for the upper roller. So right here I am loosening that, I'm breaking it free just by taking a screwdriver and wedging it down in a small area there at the bottom and twisting so that it breaks free. And then once it pops free, it glides up and down, allowing the roller, the press roller, to move up and down depending on how thick uh, of a plate or whatever you're printing. Now there's not a lot of supports on this file. Uh, the geared roller does have to have uh, some supports on it um, and maybe if you've got a better printer you don't have to but on mine I definitely uh, for safety's sake put some supports in there the uh, top roller you need a little bit of support on the very bottom of it but it's very easily removable so here we are just doing a little cleanup and then we uh, get to putting this thing together Now about the only thing you're going to need in addition to whatever you've printed uh, for this press 
is a couple of uh, bolts and nuts. At least two. I would advise four nuts. You'll see why here in a little while. Um, these are M5s. I just had these laying around. They're about uh, three inches long, two and a half inches long, somewhere around there. And uh, you'll also need some kind of glue. Like I'm using super glue here. You can use uh, any kind of adhesive that you like, Gorilla Glue or uh, two part epoxy. Probably a little overboard on that, but you could use it. So two of those nuts uh, get pressed into a uh, hexagonal uh, slot that is located on the two uprights. And here I'll show you in a second. They're press fit. So all you really have to do is place them in the slot and just use some pliers to press them down in there. They should be fine. Uh, if they are for some reason a little loose, you can always just uh, put a little dab of glue in there. And your bolts will thread down through these. Just repeat that process for the other upright. So here I'm putting the frame together. Uh, make sure to put your rollers in first, obviously. After that, uh, make sure everything lines up okay. Um, then take a little of your glue, um, tacking down in preparation for putting in the dovetail bow tie pieces that uh, physically tie the entire thing together. Uh, you'll probably want to glue those in as well. Now you're going to want to take your two bolts and go ahead and thread them down through the nuts that you inserted earlier in the process. Uh, that'll hold those in place and allow them to go up and down. And what I'm doing here is I am adding a bolt to the end after I've threaded it through and I'm going to super glue that down so that it doesn't move. What this does is it just adds more surface area when you tighten these down it won't damage the PLA roller housing as easily. Next you want to put in your square handle axle. Mine was a little tight. Then go ahead and attach the handle. And we've done it. You've got a very small but functional printmaking press. So let's uh, let's see if we can't get this thing ready and uh, do a print. Now most printmakers use felt pads um, on top of their uh, plates and or uh, linos. I don't have any, so I'm going to attempt to do this with a thin piece of EVA foam. So I'm going to cut it to size and we'll use that. So in the design of the open press, there is four bolt holes on the bottoms of the uprights. These are there for you to bolt it down to the edge of a table. Uh, I choose to make it portable, so I'm going to screw it down to the edge of a board and then use the rest of the board as a palette uh, for the inks, which you'll see later on. So as a palette, I'm going to be using a square pane of glass. I have a whole box of this stuff because I use it as a print surface for my FDM printer. But I'm just going to take some blue painter's tape 
and edge it so I don't cut myself. It is pretty sharp on the edge. You can use any smooth surface um, as long as it's easily wipeable and you can clean it up. Because you generally just pour some ink down on a uh, smooth surface and roll it out with a roller to put it on your plate or your lino block. And what better way to christen your new printmaking press than with a lino cut of a uh, dick butt. Yeah, it's got to be done. And what I'm using here is a uh, small sheet of uh, lino or linoleum that I have, printmaking linoleum that I have cut down to size using linoleum tools and I will cut away everything that I don't want to print. Now I'm going to use some ink. I've made my own here because I don't actually have any speedball uh, lino inks so I just use some heavy medium and some regular watercolor inks and mix them together. Uh, the ink has to be somewhat thick. I'm going to roll it on and see what the print looks like. <laughs> I've got to say this has been a great little project. Make sure to go to openpressproject.com uh, if you want to download the files and print one for yourself. So happy printing!